Welcome back, Ascenders, to the Ascended Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Crane. dive into this concept of being both spirit and the law. So we have to remember that there's no separateness, right? Separateness is just part of the experience. Separateness is a way for the oversoul, that God, the universe, the uh, divine intelligence, that, uh, that thing, right? That spiritual thing, that thing that we all know is there, but no one can agree on what to call it, right? That, that thing. Separateness is the thing that that thing experiences in order to understand different aspects of itself. So we are just the different aspects of that thing, but we are the thing itself. We are that divine intelligence. We are the oversoul, right? This is how, by the way, being a psychic just in general works. It's not that psychics are like a part of this information field that is not available to other people. It's that we are the thing. We are the universe, right? All of us, we are the universe. We are all one. At the moment, we're just experiencing different pieces of ourselves. And so that experience is felt in the form of separateness, right? But We're not, in terms of psychics, pulling from a different energy field. We are the divine intelligence. And so we just know, right? So you want to know something, you go ask a psychic, you say, oh my God, how do they know? Because they are the thing. They are the universe, right? They are the oversoul. They are the thing that we all know exists, but no one knows what to call it. And you are that thing because we all are one. I am you. And you are me. That's why, what's that, what's this saying? It's in the Bible, like do unto you, do unto your neighbors as you would like to be done unto you, something like that. Because if you're hurting other people, you're just hurting yourself. And so when it comes to the concept of being both spirit and the law, we understand again, by whatever, which way you want to call it, that the universe has some kind of laws. There are things that just... Um, work in a certain way. We understand that there is balance, for example. We understand that energy just balance itself. And w- a word that we use for it is karma. Some people use it as um, punishment and reward. Some people like to use that vocabulary. But we understand on a sort of subconscious level that there is a state of balance and that the universe will always balance itself out, Right. We know on a deeper level that that will always be the case. And we are solid in that thinking. We are solid in that knowing. No one really ever questions whether or not an energy would balance itself out, right? We just say, well, you know, karma's a bitch, even though I don't really like that particular saying very much. But that's how, you know, modern day culture actually relates to that. We understand that there is a cause and effect. We understand that like for everything that happens, something reacts to it, right? We understand that there are these sort of set universal laws that are consistent, that are uh, predictable because they occur each and every single time. And so when it comes to being spirit in the law, you are the universe, right? You are the oversoul. You are the divine intelligence. You, the way you experience yourself again is just you as divine intelligence wanting to really experience a piece of yourself. And so this is the piece of yourself that you are engaging with at this particular time, which makes it the focus of your intention, which is why you feel like you are the main character in your own story and that like no one really fully understands you and that no one really fully hears you or sees you in the way that you would prefer that for them to do. But, but you are the main character and like, why is nobody like 
obsessed over the main character. Like, hello, like I'm here, right? It's because you are the main character, darling. It is because you are of the universe. You are the universe itself. And so if you are the universe itself, then who is the one setting all the rules? If we understand that there are like these set laws from the universe, we understand that the universe will always balance. We understand that there will always be cause and effect. We understand this and we understand that we ourselves are the universe. We ourselves are a piece. We're a part. We're the aspect of the greater whole. And because we are an aspect of the greater whole, that makes us the whole itself. So if we are the whole itself, then who is making the laws? That would be us. That would be you. You are the one making the laws, right? So this is what I mean when I say you are both spirit and you are the law. Meaning, if you think it, it occurs because you are the law. You are the one that's balancing everything out. If you think it because you are the universe, you are the over oversoul, you are the thing, right? I'm going to start calling it the thing. You are the thing. You are the thing that creates all things. So as the thing that creates all thing, if you're, if you go, you know what? I would like to create that thing too. You don't think that that thing will show up. You don't think that that thing will appear. If you said to yourself, you know what? A Range Rover would be nice. I don't know why I said Range Rover. It's for some reason, it just was the first thing that popped into my head. It's a lot easier to explain these things when you're dealing with material items because people can relate to like wanting a thing, like a physical thing, because for some reason that is how we like validate our thoughts. But um, let's say you want a Range Rover and some people are going to be like, but I'm in a Prius. Like, what are you talking about? Like, how do I get that Range Rover? Well, you are the thing that creates all things. You actually created the Range Rover. And so you're going to be like, well, somebody else inventing that invented that. Well, that somebody else is also you, just like how you are that somebody else. Because we're all one and we're all one because we're all a facet of the greater whole, which makes us the whole itself. So you can say, well, I want a Range Rover, but how do I get that thing? It's not how do you get that thing is that you not only did you create that thing, you are that thing. So if you say, I want a Range Rover, then a Range Rover must appear because that is the law. What is the law? The law is anything that creation wants to create. So you, as creation, you are the thing, because again, I'm, I'm going to continue to repeat this. You are the thing that's a part of the thing that has created all things, making you the thing that created all things. That includes the Range Rover. The Range Rover was created by the thing that creates all things, i.e. you. So if you want a Range Rover, you've already created the Range Rover. The, cre the Range Rover was created by you because you are the thing that creates all things. So it's not that you are trying to get something that is outside of you. That Range Rover is you. So it's not, how do I get my hands on something that is me that's outside of me? It's about remembering that it all is you. All of it's you. You want a nice house? All, well, houses are you. You are the thing that created all things which means you created the house. So if you want a house, you can have the house. It's not outside of you. It's not, how do I figure out how to break through these walls and break through these barriers that are not me in order to get the thing that I actually want? That's not what you're actually doing. You are remembering that you are the thing that you want because you are the thing that creates all things, which means the thing that you want was created by you. Not only was it created by you, it was created instantaneously. It is just up to you to walk towards it. Now, what do you mean by it was created instantaneously? Sometimes in life, we don't realize things exist until we tune into it, right? So like, there are like societies for things. Like I'm trying to think of like something. There are like cruise ship societies. Let's start there, right? There are groups of women <laughs> who have this thing where every year they love to go on a cruise and like it's like a cruise club, right? Some people don't travel often. Maybe some people don't have a passport, right? And those people maybe will may say, well, something like going on a cruise every year in a cruise group full of cruise women, it's not actually something that would have previously been in the reality, right? 
it's not something that they would have been tuned into. They don't travel. They probably don't have an interest in travel and they don't have a passport. Maybe they feel like they don't have enough money to travel. And I'm using this as an example because I've actually had friends like this. I've actually had friends that have said to me, why do you keep wanting to go out of the country? And I would say, well, why not? Like there's so many things to go see and explore. And they would say, actually, I'm really comfortable like exactly where I am. And I was like, why? Like, are you not bored? And they were like, no, like I could stay in the town that I grew up in and be like super, super happy there. I don't feel the need to explore or to go to different countries or to see different things. And then so when you have people like that, in their reality, the idea of a cruise or frequent cruises or the fact that cruise ships stop at different ports in different countries is something that's actually outside of their reality. It's not actually something that they have an ability to perceive. And it can be because it was never experienced. No one's ever talked to them about it. There's no exposure, but it could also just be because there's just no interest there, right? Let's say um, they meet somebody, they meet somebody new at work. And that person comes back from a two week vacation and they're telling them all about this, 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 this cruise vacation thing that they went on. And they're a part of this cruise club. And and the way the story is being told now, suddenly it sounds fun. And this person, this person that never traveled, right, is listening to this story and it's sparking something inside of them. It's inspiring something in them. And they're like, wait a minute, actually, this sounds like something I would like to experience. Now, because they're tuned into that thing, because they went, I would actually want to experience, I think that I want to experience that because like, like I said, everything is about your thinking, right? I think that I want to experience that in that moment, cruises, cruise ships, cruise clubs, in that moment for that person, it's then created. Now, for other people who already have things like cruising in their reality. This is not going to sound like something that that is a big deal. But to that individual, where travel as a whole was not yet in that person's reality, suddenly they said, I think I want to go on a cruise. And suddenly it's now in their reality. Suddenly they have created it in that moment, right? And now every time they're scrolling on social media, they're getting ads for Norwegian, right? They're seeing cruise ship ads everywhere. The weather is starting to get warm, right? Maybe they're still getting cruise ship ads in uh, the mailbox because that will sometimes happen super randomly. You'll just start getting advertisements from cruise ships just in the mailbox, right? And suddenly in that person's reality, they have manifested the idea of cruises, going on cruise ships, having cruise vacations, right? They have manifested that for them. Why? Because that person too is the creator, That person too is a piece of the thing, the aspect of the thing that creates all things, making them the thing itself. And the moment they said, I think I want to experience a cruise, the moment the cruise and the reality of cruising popped up in their reality, popped up in their experience. It's the moment that it was created for them. The boats exist. They're everywhere. There's boats sitting at ports right now. The only thing that person has to do is get on the damn boat, right? This is where, this is the window, right, of opportunity right here. This is the window of growth. The part from when cruising becomes a becomes a, a real concept for you and the moment you get on that boat, that time in the between is the, is the opportunity for growth. And this is where people start to fuck up right? People then start going, oh, well, but I can't do that. How much is it going to cost? I don't know if I'm ever going to have all the money for that. I need a flight to get to Florida in order to make it to the port. I don't think I can afford that flight. What do I wear? I don't have clothes for for for, for like summertime uh, vacationing. Can I get time off work? Now you get stuck and bogged down in the how, 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 how. And then what ends up happening, you go, well, maybe I shouldn't do it. So you thought, I think I want to go on a cruise. And it immediately manifested itself. Suddenly you got all the ads for cruise ships. It was like, we're here, we're here, we're here. This is where we are. This is when we disembark, okay? And you somehow talked yourself out of the reality, a reality that is flashing for you. I'm here. It's possible. Just get on the damn boat. And you have found every reason and every excuse as to why you probably shouldn't get on that boat. The moment you said, I think I want to cruise, it appeared. It popped up immediately, boom, in your reality. That was how fast the manifestation was for that particular person. But 
did that person then follow through with the manifestation by just getting on the boat? And a lot of times this is the window where people mess up. They don't follow through on the manifest the manifestation. We manifest a lot faster than we think that we actually do. The issue is follow through. We don't follow through and then we say it didn't work. The amount of people that say, I want to manifest, I want to manifest a man. I want to manifest a man. And then a man shows up, excuse me, ma'am, how you doing? And you're like, ew, not that man. And then, okay, you wanted to manifest a man. You did it instantaneously. You thought to yourself, I really want a man. You go to grocery shopping, a man approaches you, hey, miss, I just want to know if I can. And you're like, oh, excuse me. Right. And then, so he leaves. And then it's Friday night and you're sitting there talking about no one is messaging me back on these dating apps. I got ghosted. What's wrong with me? Wait, no, hold on. Don't do that. That's rude. Okay. Because remember you, universe, you thought something, it immediately came into your existence and then you went, oh, no, not that one. And then when you ended up in that window of growth, that window of opportunity, you fumbled it. And then you want to sit here and say, well, the universe hates me, which is a terrible thing to say because you are the universe itself. And to say something so significant as in the universe hates me when you are the universe, remember the universe, you, does not discriminate and you're unconditional. So what's going to happen? You're going to create a reality and you're going to create an experience that is going to mirror or mimic the universe hating you when that's not what happened. You immediately manifested a man And then in your window of opportunity, you fumbled the ball and then you wanted to go and blame the universe, i.e. blame yourself, but then not be consciously aware of the fact that you were actually blaming yourself. We manifest very fast because that is the law. Remember, we are the spirit and we are the law. So yeah, we manifest quick. We are just not skilled at learning how to manifest something. Let's say you are someone who, um, hmm, you all want to start a business and then suddenly all your ads change and it's like, this is how you get an LLC. Did you pursue that? Did you like pursue that path? Because it immediately manifested in front of you, but most likely you didn't. Most likely you were like, oh my God, these social medias, they're, they're listening to me. Why do they know my thoughts? Oh my God, they're following me. They're watching me. They know my thoughts. And instead of like listening to the information or clicking on that business that actually helps people start LLCs, you were like having a paranoid moment because you were like, oh my God, these people are following me. No, baby, you manifested because you are the universe. You are the law. You manifest it instantaneously. We just don't have an ability to clock the manifestation. We think the manifestation, like if we say, oh, I want a house. We think the manifestation is just like we wake up one day and someone has us keys, which may happen. I mean, shit, we're the universe. So if we want it to happen that way. I don't see why it couldn't happen that way. Right. But sometimes it's also different. Sometimes it's then you getting in your car and then suddenly realizing that every house you're driving past has a for sale sign. Suddenly, you said you wanted a house and now suddenly all those houses are available. Like what? How crazy is that? Maybe you are passing houses that are like for sale by owner, which you know can sometimes can be a lot more flexible of an option. You've actually manifested exactly what you wanted. You thought it, and then boom, you got into your car the same day, and you were given option after option after option. You're driving down the road for sale, for sale, for sale. That means option one, option two, option three, option four, option five. And then what do you do? You drive right on past those those signs, and you say, oh. I hope one day I can have a house. Um, okay. So not only did you say, I hope one day, you've just unconsciously compromised with the universe, which is a dangerous thing to do because the universe, you, is uh, non-discriminatory and unconditional. And so if you say, I hope, what you're really saying is, well, you know, it'd be nice if I could, but I understand if I can't. That's really what you're saying. And so then you, the universe, who again is not discriminatory, right? And unconditional goes, well, maybe not right now. And then you're like, okay. And you're like, well, I hope, but it didn't work out. And then it's so fine. And then you sit there and you think that you can't have a house, but you pass all these houses that had for sale signs on it. What are you talking about? What do you mean that there's a problem with how you manifest? There's not an issue with how you manifest. There's an issue with how you see.